Hi, my name is Sam, and I'm a cloud support engineer at AWS in Dallas, Texas. Today, I'll show you how to create a swap partition for your Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instance. Let's get started. Enabling swap on a Linux system allows the kernel to move inactive memory pages out of RAM and into a partition on your storage device. Enabling swap also aids stability in situations when the system is running out of available RAM. Let's go through the required steps to resolve this issue in the AWS Management Console, along with the Linux command line. First, we must determine how much swap space we need. As a general rule, if your EC2 instance has less than two gigabytes of RAM, create a swap space that's twice the size of the system RAM. For instances with between two to 64 gigabytes of RAM, it's a best practice to create a swap space that is half the size of the system RAM. I've already logged into my instance using SSH, and we can see that it has four gigabytes of RAM. So I'll create a swap partition of two gigabytes. Now let's inspect the configuration of our disk. In this EC2 instance, we can see that all the disk space is already allocated to the existing partitions. To make things easy, I'll go to the AWS Management Console and simply increase the size of my Amazon Elastic Block Store volume by two gigabytes. I can do this easily without having to power off or reboot my EC2 instance. Once you see the volume state is optimizing, you are ready to move on to the next step on the command line. Now that I have added two gigabytes to my EBS volume, I want to verify it using the lsblk command. I can confirm that the total size of the disk is now 10 gigabytes and the existing root partition is only eight gigabytes. I now need to fix the partition table to make sure that it's properly aligned on the disk. Now that I have updated the partition table, I can go ahead and use fdisk to create the new partition. Type n to create a new partition, and then accept the suggested partition number. Accept the default values for beginning and ending sectors, and then type p to review the changes before writing them. Now I want to verify that the partition was created successfully. I can use the fdisk-l command. After I verify the creation of the partition, I'll use the part probe command to inform the OS of the partition table change. Now that I've verified that my new two gigabyte partition was created successfully, I can configure it as swap. Double check and make sure that you provide the correct partition. Using MK swap on the wrong partition can cause problems. Use lsblk and carefully check the partition number and size to be sure that they match what you specified when using fdisk to create the partition. Then run MK swap. Now that the new partition is configured to be used as swap, we must enable it. Enable swap for your newly created swap partition by using the swap on command. And verify the swap with swap on s and free. To make sure that your new swap partition will persist after a reboot, we need to add a line to slash etc slash fs tab. First, obtain the UUID of the partition using the blkid command. Then add the following line to your fs tab file using a text editor such as vim or nano. Next time you reboot the system, verify that the swap is still present using the free command. So now we've finished the process of creating a new partition on our EC2 instance and enabling it as swap. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.